Welcome to this Bible series, part six, Wisdom Literature. And we will look specifically to the Psalms as the powerhouse of prayer. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament wisdom literature, which consists of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs, presupposes that life is lived according to a godly order. Their experience shows that those who follow God's commandments will live well and that the wicked will perish. We see these thoughts in the Psalms, the Proverbs and the Song of Songs. For example, in Proverbs 4 we read, The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Yet, we also read how the righteous will suffer injustice and will have to deal with that, as we find in the books of Job and Ecclesiastes. Job chapter 2 alludes to that when he says, Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Or even in chapter 1, Job says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And so every aspect of the Jewish life, whether good or bad, was and is brought into a relationship with God, even if they struggle to grasp the sense of it at that specific moment in time. Let's have a look at the various books. The book of Job deals with the theme of theodicy, that is, the justice of God in the light of human suffering. This is a very challenging book and should be read slowly and meditated from beginning to end. The main thought is not that Job lost everything and that in the end he found prosperity. No, the main thought is that Job found God. His narrow view of God was shattered, yet he received the true God back. We learn from this that lamenting is in fact an act of faith and not of doubt. And so we may be authentic before God and pour out our hearts before Him, our suffering, the things that we struggle with, because we believe in a God who does care. Proverbs are often expressing a contrast. For example, Proverbs 10. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. It is a practical book dealing with the art of wise living, which is founded on the fear of God, as is stated in Proverbs 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The book Ecclesiastes proclaimed that life which is not centered on God is purposeless and meaningless. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 14 says, I have seen all the things that are done under the sun, all of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. The song by Bob Dylan, Blowing in the Wind, has its roots here. Then Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to 4 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn. A time to dance. Pete Seeger's song, Turn, 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 comes from here. The book Song of Songs shows that wisdom and love are both gifts of God to be received with gratitude and celebration. It depicts an amorous relationship between a couple and all the experiences in the oscillating times of separation and intimacy, anguish and ecstasy, tension and contentment. It shows love in all its spontaneity, its beauty, its power and its exclusiveness. Song of Songs chapter 8 verse 6 says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. 
Now let us turn to the Psalms, the book of prayer for Jews and Christians alike. Before we look at the Psalms, I would like to ask you what role do the Psalms play in your life? Maybe you hear them read during a service on a Sunday or some festive days, like at a wedding or a funeral. Maybe you look them up when you need a verse to write on a card or message to someone you like. For example, commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him and He will act. Psalm 37.5 Maybe a psalm verse is hanging somewhere in your house and it reminds you of a special event, like Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or maybe you keep a verse that accompanies you through some difficult times. For example, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27 verse 1. Many hymns originate from psalms. For example, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Or, As the deer pans for living waters. The Psalms play a fundamental role in many people's lives, even if they don't really realize it. But who of you take the time to really read the Psalms, to meditate on them and to pray them on a personal level? The Christian monks pray or sing the Psalms during four fixed time schedules each day in the monasteries. These four prayer times are like the four walls of a room. And so they create space or room to experience God's presence and are an invitation to come and to worship God. Yes, the Psalms leave imprints on our lives if they are repeated. They resound in our lives. In this way, the Psalms become road signs for the future. They want to guide and mold us on our way, right throughout life. Let us look at the content of the Psalms. The Psalms are the book of prayer for both Jews and Christians. They use it to pray to God. The Jewish writer Elie Wiesel wrote, The whole fate of Israel is determined through prayer, which includes any situation, imploring for health and food, thankfulness for received and shared blessings, joy and sorrows of the heart, remembrances and lamentations, shouts of joy and suppressed tears, all yearnings, all attempts to make sense, all changes in the Jewish existence in a personal or corporate capacity are reflected upon in prayer. End of quote. The Psalms have their foundation in the fact that God had first spoken to his people and that now the people or the individual are responding with these words from the Psalms, even by grappling and wrestling with God. Therefore we find that at the center of praise and lamentation, of supplication and thankfulness, is trust of the believers. From this basis of trust towards God, we can now understand the intensity of the petition or the lamentation. From the secure knowledge of God's faithfulness that He did save and will help, we can understand the exuberant joy and the thankfulness. Therefore, the content of the Psalms we can therefore graphically depict by the symbol of the cross, where in the middle is trust, to the top praise. To the bottom, lamentation. To the left, petition. To the right, thankfulness. Yes, through the Psalms, any person can pour out their hearts as they are, authentically, before God. Yes, Luther said of the Psalms, Here you can look right into the heart of the saints. As already said, the two strongest prevailing tones in the Psalms are praise and lamentations. Praise is an expression of joy towards God, while lamentation gives expression to the suffering and the struggle people experience. And again, both have to do with God's actions. On God's perceived judgment, we respond with lamentation. And on His given mercy, the person replies with praise and worship. Let us quickly have a look at two psalms. 
The first and the last psalm are a kind of framework for the 150 psalms. Psalm 1 wants to guide our way into the future by putting an option in front of us. Either we will follow God and His Word, or we can live our lives without Him. And so both have consequences that we need to consider. The psalm reads, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stands in the way of sinners, or sits at the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And so as you read this psalm, you have to ask yourself, who are you? Are you righteous? Or are you the wicked? The last psalm, Psalm 150, shows us the goal of our lives, to joyfully worship God. It reads, Hallelujah! Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and flute. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, between the first and the last psalm, we read about and experience ourselves the ups and downs of life and bring them into a relationship with God through our prayers. Let us look at the practical applications of the psalms. The theology and the situation of each psalm are different and unique. Although our own situation may not fully match the prayed psalm, we should still continue to pray it for three reasons. Firstly, because it teaches us to intercede for others. We all do know of people who go through, for example, some suffering. And secondly, it already prepares us for the time when we have some similar experiences ourselves. For example, out of the depth I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy, which we find in Psalm 130. I'm sure people do come to mind who find themselves in the depth through suffering or loss. Therefore we can stand in the gap for them before God. Through familiarizing ourselves with the psalm, we too will one day, when we find ourselves in a hole, be able to cry out to or wrestle with God through uttering these words. And thirdly, the psalms trigger thankfulness in our lives, which is the best antidote against worry. The psalms open our eyes to the many blessings we have received and to thank God from the bottom of our hearts. For example, Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then we can name these benefits one by one and thank God for them. Not only do the Psalms give expression to the thoughts and yearnings of the heart through words, but by praying them aloud, they become alive. They resound within us and mold us. Suddenly we consciously discover something about ourselves through the Psalms. For example, our sinfulness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Psalm 51 We too will suddenly admit our own transgressions and plead for mercy. Or a psalm can ignite gratitude and praise within us. 
We can open our eyes towards the great deeds of God, His wonderful creation and zealous redemption. Take for instance Psalm 107, which is praising God for His redemption. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those who redeemed from the hand of the foe. foe. Whoever attends the school of the Psalms will find himself in the school of faith. Through the Psalms we discover God in everything that is alive. Sun, the moon, the stars, the plants, the animals and every human being. We are taught to rely on God under all circumstances. Be it threats by enemies or illness, when we suffer or when life doesn't seem to make any sense, even when facing the fleetingness of life, our death. We have our shelter ultimately in God. Remember, Jesus prayed the Psalms when he was on the cross. He lamented, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he also prayed, into your hands I commit my spirit. Trusting God, even if he experienced something that wants to tell the opposite. And so the Psalms teach us to thank to praise and worship God for the acts of salvation and the many blessings we have received as well. Psalm 145 alludes to that. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. A priest and psychologist Albert Hofer gives us a beautiful image to remember the Psalms by calling them the gloves of prayer. He says, What did I pray unswervingly all these years when I prayed the Psalms in silence or aloud? I lamented with those who suffered. I cried out with shouts of despair with those in desperation. I rejoiced with those who exulted. Since they experienced an act of unexpected redemption, they have, so to speak, allowed me to borrow their voices. The I of the initial person who prayed the psalm some 300 years, 3,000 years ago might have been an anonymous Jewish person, and I was allowed to make his words my own. I slipped with my own eye into his eye, since when I prayed they were my lamentations, my cries or shouts of exultation. I used the prayers of another person as a pair of gloves which I slipped into in order to raise my hands to God for prayer. End of quote. And so, throughout our lives, the Psalms want to be guiding and molding us on our journey with and our journey towards God. They lead us into God's future. Let us make use of them and so arrive at our ultimate destination where we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever as the promise we find in Psalm 23, verse 6. Amen. O oh Lord, we thank you for the wisdom literature. We thank you especially for the Psalms, that we can use these words, that we can be taught to pray, to bring every aspect of our lives in relationship to you through prayer. Our yearnings, our struggles, our suffering, but also our praise, our all, our worship. Thank you, Lord, for these words that come alive again and again. Thank you for these words that guide us, that show us who you are, that accompany us, that transform us to become the people you want us to be. We glorify you for that. Thank you, Lord for prayer, and through being connected to you, we receive power and strength, encouragement and hope. In Jesus' name we pray.